Hello and welcome to this video where I'm going to be using ClickFunnels 2.0 to create some countdown timers, heck an even evergreen timer if you want, show you how they work, the features, the functions, and all of that other fun stuff. If you'd like to follow along, I will leave my link down below in the description. And if you click that, you can get a free 14 day trial to ClickFunnels 2.0. If you're currently already using it, you can use that to log in and follow along if you want. Let's begin. So business as usual, you're going to be going to any, uh, landing page in a sales funnel where you want to go this is just going to be uh, an example so i just yeah what's the word here an order form here let's click on edit and to keep things simple all we need to do is do add element obviously you can put it wherever you want usually depending on where you want to put your timer like on the top is going to be a great spot for it because imagine you put it all the way on the bottom just by itself not everyone is going to scroll all the way down there uh, if you want to put it on the bottom, usually it's like in addition to at the top or, you know, sometimes people will sprinkle them all throughout, say like a sales page, just in case they missed it, you know, other times. But anyway, let's click on add element. And if we scroll down a little, there's going to be a timer section or a countdown, excuse me, I stand corrected. Okay. So we have our countdown and what I want to do is just drag it up a little bit more. And that seems pretty isolated. You know, it's when you go to the page, you're definitely going to notice it. Like it, it might stick in or kind of blend in a little, given the fact that it's also black, but we can change that around to make it pop more. So let's click on this. And here are going to be these specific types of timers that we can utilize. We have calendar event. Okay. And then we have countdown and then we have evergreen. I believe countdown and evergreen are probably going to be the most favorite. So with this, it's a specific end date. This is good if you're doing a product launch where say it launches for three days and three days from now at 11 PM Eastern time, it's going to be taken down. So for example, let's just do the fourth and very similar to what I said, let's say it's 11 PM. And I like how it kind of gives you the estimate of what it's going to be. Uh, Eastern time is great. That's where I am. And now the important part is going to be expire action. So what do you want to happen? You can show or hide content if you want. So for example, once this expires, maybe there's a button for add to cart. You could remove that if you want. So like, you know, the card's closed and then obviously, you know, go from there. For example, you could hide a button that's add to cart and then a new one would appear where the price increases. Like say if it's a product launch, that's usually what happens. Either it gets taken down completely or the price goes up double, something like that. Also, there's going to be redirect. That's another option. For example, if a product launch is ending, you could send them to a landing page where it says something like, you know, you just missed it, but thank you so much for showing interest in this product. Uh, feel free to join our email if you'd like to get updates about when we go back or go live again for version 2.0, 17.0, or whatever the reason is, right? But just as an example, you know, I'm just going to put click funnels there. We don't have to actually use it, but you know, that's what you could do. Probably put the HTTPS in there. There we go. So there's going to be some timer displays or display settings. You can show years. Like, I think that's just <laughs> overdoing it. Like if you have a timer that has years in it in the first place, you're not really taking advantage of scarcity. It's a little bit too much time for someone to act. Same with uh, months, uh, probably same with weeks, days I could see using, right? Days isn't as bad, obviously. But uh, if you want to do it that way, you could do three days, 14 hours, something like that. And of course, we have show hours, minutes, seconds, uh, show the colons. Uh, I like that. It's a nice way of separating them. We have a time, time container, countdown container, and label. And we also have date time gaps, uh, pretty much. This is similar to a padding, like how far away. See, uh, let's see, go back. Let me just do this, undo. There we go. How far away are they? Uh, padding once again, background. So we have borders too. If you want to change this around, we can do different borders. Uh, that's kind of makes it pop a little bit more. Also with the color is another great way of making it pop. Say if we wanted red there, we have a shadow. There we go. That makes it pop a little bit more. It's not exactly a, a great color combination, but I'm just kind of, you know, quickly going through to show you. There's also going to be corners if you want to round them or not. Uh, not a huge deal in my opinion. So let's go back up to, where was it? The time. So we can edit this too. If we want to make it larger, I kind of like, let's see. I kind of like that. It's bigger. It's good. Uh, color too, if we want to change this around, like I said, we can change around everything. Red probably, let's see, maybe a green, something that really contrasts. Uh, like what pops the most is kind of like what I'm looking for here. Obviously, you know, you would take some time to figure that out. Or maybe you just want to use something that's similar to like your brand colors. I think red is a decent pop if you want really big. 
I think large is good. You can edit style. You can override. And of course, if you want to go back where you're here, just click on the countdown section to go previously back. Let's go to evergreen as well. <clears throat> evergreen is great because this is something you do once and it's evergreen. It kind of goes either every month, every uh, day, every so weekly, daily or on page load. So you could do like weekly if you want. Uh, the reset day is going to be, let's just say Friday. Okay, something like that at this specific time. And once again, you have your time zone. I'm going to go to countdown. Uh, I don't think I'm close to any of the hours at the time. So unfortunately, like you can't do specific minutes that at least I can see here. It's just going to be every 30 minutes. Otherwise, I would show you what happens when you get to it, you know, and it redirects elsewhere. But obviously, you know, you can test that out as well when you get going. But all in all, that's how you can set up the countdown timers and the evergreen timer in ClickFunnels. Like I said, this is very helpful if you have a product launch, if you have a special coupon or discount, if you have a fire sale, anything that is pretty much time sensitive, this is a great way to showcase it because these have been proven to increase sales just phenomenally. You know, people use them on webinars for a specific reason, like, you know, you got one hour left, we're answering questions and I'm closing it down. People use them in product launches. I'm sure you've seen them if you've been around internet marketing for you know, a few days, you know, whatever it's going to be. But if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. That concludes my evergreen timer and countdown timer tutorial. If you want to test out ClickFunnels 2.0, I will have my link down below in the description for a free 14-day trial. That about does it. My name is James. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.